All right, so how are you guys doing today? Uh, yesterday in China and today in America, it is Chinese New Year, as some of you probably know. Uh, and so I am wearing this shirt that was made for me by my wife's family when we visited them in China. And uh, it's for Chinese New Year. So, uh, Happy New Year. It's a lunar uh, calendar New Year. And good nian hao. I uh, probably messed that up, but in the best I could. So, uh, <laughs> I, I, did not, uh, I did not speak a lot of Chinese. Um, Mandarin, that is. Okay, so either one, any kind of foreign language, really, now that I think of it. <laughs> okay, so I want to talk today about a, something that I see a lot of in comments, both in the AOPS forums and here, uh, and even in my comments. Uh, and the first thing I want to say is I don't hold... When I see what I consider a misperception, I don't have any judgment towards the person holding the misperception. Throughout my life, I have uh, thought things that were inaccurate, and I have held inaccurate beliefs at times about different things, and all of us are on a journey of maturation and uh, gaining knowledge and understanding about the world, and we all have, we're all on different points in that perspective, uh, perspective uh, or spectrum is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> That's perspective and spectrum put together. Uh, and so I don't, I don't think less, you know, it's okay. You're on your journey. You're going to be learning or maybe you won't, you know, about uh, what, what there is and what is true about the world, if you will. And so I wanted to talk about this, though, because I noticed that a lot of it, it's building some kind of uh, resentment or frustration or bitterness towards the contest or, you know, uh, the committee, the MAA committee the, the, that they have that forms the test or even MAA itself. And just even general levels of frustration at all based on what we think are misplaced questions. You know, for, for example, some people thought 20 was really easy or 21 was, but 2 was, you know, really hard or whatnot. And I wanted to address those things today. So the first thing I wanted to say about it is um, it's kind of bold of us to assume that that's not by design. I, I went and looked at the website before this to try to see if they make any claims about a linear increase in difficulty. Um, I did a Google search, I tried other search engines too, I went to the MAA website and read all of the information that they have on the contest. I could find nothing. Um, on the AOPS wiki, which I will link in the description, you can read it here if my camera can pick it up approximately. Problems generally increase in difficulty, about the second line right there, um, as the exam progresses, generally. Okay. It is not made to be that question, you know, 10 is definitely harder than question 4. Now, it's trying to be approximately as you go through that questions in the later parts are harder than the questions in the front parts. But you need to consider several things. Uh, number one, we are not, especially for this kind of math, it, this is in like a... It's like an open world RPG. It's the, the role playing game that we're all playing called I want to learn better and cooler math and more beautiful math now that we think of it. And there's so many different resources that you can use. You don't have to go on a certain quest line like maybe you had in World of Warcraft if you ever play that game. In the beginning it was open world but there was like a kind of a progression that you would go to till a certain point. This isn't like that. This is the ultimate open world RPG. You can go to any website, any YouTube channel. You can pick up um, any AOPS book. Here's Pre-Algebra, AOPS Well-Worn, written by Richard Ruchek. Um, you can order any uh, general math textbook online. You can go to Khan Academy. You get to choose how to invest the ultimate resource, which is your time. And so as you make those decisions, some kids are going to learn number theory in fifth grade. It's been happened. Some kids have completed that book at that time. I know students who did the pre-algebra AOPS book, I believe, in second grade. It's not a joke, not an exaggeration. Some people are just built differently. I, I probably couldn't have handled it at that age, but they went through it as a self-study at that age with their parents, of course. And so we're all on different paths, accumulating our mathematical knowledge as we go through and prepare for the test. So what might seem like a trivial problem to you is going to seem like maybe the hardest thing they've ever seen. They've never seen anything like that for that other student. 
And so there, you, can't, you can't base it off of your experience. It's a general kind of altogether consensus. And it's also made by human beings, even if that was their objective to make a perfect increase in difficulty from 1 to 25. Do they know the exact thing that, you know, 100,000 students are learning in any given year when they're free to learn whatever they want and none of the information is tracked? Well, maybe Google does. But besides that, right, your, your time is not recorded in any spreadsheet for them to look at. We don't, there's no survey that goes out to competition math students to say, what are you studying at this time? It's just not that big of a deal to look into, really. So no one's, you know, uh, paid the million dollars to construct such a study to see what students are learning at various points in their development, right? And so you can't look at it in that way. It doesn't do you actually any good to assume that it's going to go in increase in difficulty from 1 to 25, where 21 might have been remarkably easy for a lot of people, uh, but, you know, super hard for some, but for a lot of them, it was really easy, right? But maybe you got stuck on 17 or 18, it, it threw you for a loop. Uh, this year on 18, I did not solve it under mock conditions. I came back to it later after I had timed myself. I didn't record the, the, the session that I solved it in. I just wanted to get a general feel for how far I could get. I got about 21 questions answered under the time, but I had to skip 18. And so because of that, because I couldn't think of it at the time, in the moment, under time pressure, that happens. Skipping is a real tool, right? We don't even know that it's not by design that they made a certain question in a certain place that was really challenging to think of. That might have been the actual objective. Where on the MAA website does it say, we don't want to throw roadblocks in your path that you have to go around? Doesn't say that. Their FAQ doesn't mention that anywhere. That is the assumption of the community, and it's your personal belief that you believe it should definitely only have a perfect increase, and it should never have a question that's misplaced. But I'm sorry, we've got to match your belief with reality. And in reality, the MAA and the AMC, uh, uh, part of the, comp the, uh, the Math Association of, of, of America, the, the uh, entity, they don't make that claim anywhere on their website. This is something you would like them to do because from your perspective, your life would be easier if you could just have a nice linear increase in difficulty. But that's not the way the world works, friend. You're going to have to accept that other people have different objectives, some of which are unknown to us. And unless we were in on the committee's design or the Whoever part of the NAA does it, I think Evan Chen knows a lot about this. You would might want to check out his channel and ask. He's made several AOPS uh, comment forum post responses where he explained a little bit about how it works. And it's not the primary objective of the NAA. Um, I'm also going to link the AMC 10's um, website or from the NAA, they're part of it. It's linked in that AOPS wiki article. But there's another one too, and it says the main purpose, this is the, from the AMA, MAA website, it says the main purpose of the AMC 10 is to spur interest in mathematics and to develop talent through the excitement of solving challenging problems in a timed multiple choice format. The problems range from very easy to extremely difficult. It doesn't say it goes exactly in that order. Sometimes you might find a question that seems misplaced, but they don't talk about it at all on their web, web, website. Right? This is something that we have done uh, as a community where we've imposed upon them a belief that we think in an ideal world it would work this way. Right? But why? Why? What, what, are, what are we? What am I? I'm nothing. You. We're all. We don't have any influence over the way they're going to do what they want to do, and we don't know what their objectives are. Right? When you watch like American Gladiator or something on TV, is the last obstacle always the hardest? No. Right, sometimes there'll be one in the middle that a lot of people fall off on. I don't watch it that much. I've probably watched it for a total of one hour in my life. But I've noticed that it's not a perfect uh, in increase in difficulty. It starts off kind of maybe simple. The second one gets a little bit harder. The third one's like, bam, this one gets a lot of people. They fall off in the water or whatnot. Right, or they have the, the Japanese show or the same thing where they try and knock them off this obstacle course. Why are we operating with this assumption? Because that assumption is leading you to after-test bitterness. And I gotta tell you, 
You don't get anything out of it. All you get out of that bitterness and the resentment that you feel is your emotional baggage that you carry forward in, into the future. And oftentimes that emotional baggage leads to, I'm done with the AMC tent. I'm done improving these skills because I don't, the committee did it. Uh, that's a waste. You're hurting yourself. That's it. The rest of the world keeps going on. The sun keeps coming up the next day like it always does, right? The moon still comes out at night and well, it's there all the time, but we see it at night, right? Sometimes in the day. Uh, but you get the point, right? The world's going to keep going regardless of whether you decide to continue on the AMC 10. Whatever your personal thoughts about, well, if I could, you know, rule the world, I would make it a perfect, okay. And maybe that might even be the best. We don't, we don't know. Why, look at what all probably tons of papers have been written. Is it always best when, you know, trying to test your skills to have a perfect increase in difficulty? No, it's not. Right? It's th there's nothing that says that. I don't know any papers that were written that say something like that. Do you? Can you find one? Where's the abstract that says this is what's best for society, right? Or for people who are trying to improve themselves through the joy and the beauty of mathematics, right? And this is what the purpose of the test is, is to grow interest. And in that, I think it's remarkably successful. I don't think, I, I have no belief about a misplaced question. And I don't think you should either. Because again, all that leads to is frustration on your behalf, and the only thing you gain out of it is bringing your emotional level and happiness and joy down. That is the only net effect. All of your frustrations are pounding sand. That's what it is at the end of the day. You're screaming into the void and nobody's listening. Right? And I don't want you to go through that. I, I don't want that. I've been around bitter people in my life. Man, it doesn't do you any good. Right? Try to focus on the positives. Did you improve from last year to, from that last year to this year? Don't think about mock tests, by the way. I, I hear these stories too. Oh, on the mock, I'm getting such and such, but on the real thing, I got this. Yeah, and I'll talk about this in a future video. There is no substitute for the actual pressure of the test. You cannot trick your brain into thinking that this test I take at home with nothing to gain from it except my good feeling of doing well has the same level of pressure as an Amy qualification on the line. It does not. Don't pretend that it does. This is something a lot of us have to get used to. The difference between practice and the real thing. It's different, right? It's different. Um, and so I don't, I don't believe in misplaced questions, right? And I just wanted you to understand that. I don't want, you know, if you're going to be a viewer of the channel, and if you want to continue to carry on that belief, it's a free country. It's a free world to believe what you want to believe about the ideals of society. And in this case, a subsegment of society called competition math. And I know that you might feel that way, but everybody comes to the test with a different skill set. When I looked at problem two on the AMC 10, instantaneous. I knew right away the moment what was up. I recognized it and I knew, I knew right then, this is a bomb going to go off for so many people. This is going to hit so many people. And I, it saddens me because, ah, I wish I maybe I would have mentioned on the channel at some point. But you know where I saw it? And I'll talk about this in a, a, a video about silly mistakes and how to avoid them. I saw it in an AOPS book. There was a section where they talked about it. And it was, I think it was a square root of something equals this. And you got two answers, but only one of them was right. And the reason was the absolute value. And I never forgot that. And you know why I didn't forget it? Because I made a mistake. The mistake teaches you not to make the mistake again. And uh, I don't want to talk about what I'm going to say for that content in this video. I just wanted to specifically address this idea that the various communities have about what was considered a misplaced question. I would like you to expel that idea. Expect there to be questions that are before easier ones that you can't do. That is a totally normal ever since for 20 years. It's always been this way. Yet every year we expect it to change. What a waste of time, energy, emotional, you know, capital that you have that you could be spending in studying or improving yourself in some capacity, right? And so that's kind of all I wanted to say about that. One last thing I wanted to add to this video. Um, I don't know what school you guys are at, and this is just a, you know, an appeal, if you will. Um, the pandemic's been really hard on a lot of people. I don't know if you've seen the stories um, about, you know, certain schools, I think in, in Las Vegas, for instance, or Nevada, they had a number of, you know, I hate to say it, but people took their life. They're under a lot of stress. And I wanted to ask you as an appeal, now that the tests are over, they're in the rear view, reach out to some of your friends, right? Some people you maybe haven't talked to in a while, check in on them. 
I, I, I don't I want to be you know, macabre or anything like that, but this is the reality we live in. It's a very stressful time, and for people in the age group of you know, 11 to 18 years old, it can be really challenging to not spend the time around your peers at school, not see them. Everybody has a different home life, and it's not fun for everyone. And so I just wanted to ask you, you know, as an appeal to you guys that are out there, a little bit, it's in the rear view now, the test, the focus was on that, but don't forget your friends, don't forget your peers, even if they're not even a close friend. Send out a message to them, reach out, say, hey, I was thinking about you, how you doing? Right? We're all in this thing together, and as a community, we should look out for one another. And I'm not anything special, I'm not trying to be, you know, your uh, motivational leader as far as, you know, morals go or things like that. Um, I, I'm not, I'm not that kind of person, but I just, I hate to read these kind of stories in the news and things like that. And, um, I just wanted to encourage you if you have someone like that, maybe you haven't talked to them in a while, try to schedule a Zoom meeting to speak with them, see how they're doing, check in on them, look out for each other. I'll see you guys in future videos. Let's get rid of this idea of misplaced questions, or if you want to hold on to it, you can do that too. But I, I would again say it's, there's no benefit in that. And so uh, that's all I got to see on this one. I'll see you guys in the next video. I don't know when I will get more solutions out. I'm teaching in about a half hour, um, and I don't know, you know what comes after that. Maybe this weekend I'll have time to film more. I do know that most of the solutions have now been filmed by various channels, and there's also written solution discussions on the AOPS forums if you go to the contests and programs forum. So check those things out. I'm sorry they can't all be from me, but this is not all I do. I work about 60 hours a week teaching in session, in class, either private tutor or cl classes, either for my own company or the company that I work for. And so I just, I'm not always able to film and I apologize for that. You guys have a good one. I'll see you in the next video.